options here. Remember again, this is the this is talking about the indefinite integral. This is a definite integral. If you if you integrate your velocity function here, you're going to get something that's related to your position function. Other than you don't necessarily know because there can be a constant, right? It could be a you, you can't get the exact function because there there's that plus c. You have to know some kind of information about it in order to figure out what that constant is, right? Um, but it is related to um, it is related to your position function, and this is the definite integral. Regardless of what that constant is, this is going to give you the net change in the position. Okay, net change in position. In other words, the, it gives the displacement. Okay, again, think about um, some of the physics things you know. If you start out with, oops. You start out with acceleration of a projectile, right? Launch something up in the air. Uh, what's that? If you if you start out with acceleration on the thing as a constant, negative nine point eight. If you integrate that, what do you get? No, let's do it just one step at a, at a time here. What do you get? You integrate a constant. What do you get? Negative. If I integrate that with respect to t of time, right? Let's call this a of t, not just a. You get velocity. You're going to get v of t. You get negative 9.8 t plus some constant, right? Except the constant, you call it your initial velocity, right? Well, however you, I don't know if you call it that or whatever you call it, right? That's the constant that you uh, that you have. If you integrate it again, what do you get? You get your position, whatever letter you're going to use for that. I don't know, in calculus textbooks often they use X or S or something like that, but whatever you're using for it, let's just call it. The problem with X is then people get confused because it should be over there, but we'll use S because I think that's what they do in that textbook. This is position. I know I, well, or this, this, is, this is your position. What do you get here? You get, if you integrate these two terms here, what do you get? Well, what, what's, what do you get for this? If you have a t, it's what? It's that, it's t squared, it's a half t squared, right? Okay, I don't know if you've made the connection with your physics stuff, but yeah, it's a, this is going to be negative 4.9 t squared, right? It's, that's where that, you know, that's where your physics formulas come from. What is this? Plus that constant times t. Technically, plus another constant here. In physics, I think you just pretend that this is zero all the time, so you don't need that constant. Yes. But technically, you could say that this is your initial position, right, if it was something different. If you wanted to call this zero, well, then your formula would just, like if this was, oops, I guess we don't want to, we could start like this. If this was 100 meters above ground, you could just put plus 100 on the, on the end there, right? In physics, you just seem to always call this zero and work from there which makes sense, and then you don't need to worry about that. If you, if, you take, if you start with this and you take the derivative, you get down to velocity and acceleration. It works the same way the other way. If you start with acceleration, you get the other, th you get the other stuff. It's just that you're going to introduce a constant at every step of the way, and you need to, you'd need to know some information. You need to know what your initial velocity is to actually write this function. You, you know something about how it's changing, but you don't know what the actual function is unless you know at least one piece of information about where it is, right? This. And the same with that. So if, if, you, if you actually want to write the, the function, you need that. If all you want to do is the net change, if you're subtracting them, right? Like when we evaluate it, it doesn't matter which one we use, right? It, it wouldn't matter what this is because if we're doing that evaluating it for uh, 0 to 5. Whatever we put in there, if this is negative 9.8t, if we put plus 7 or minus 3 or anything in there, when we evaluate it for these, it'll disappear, right? That, that constant disappears, so it doesn't matter. This is a graph. We have, there's no function for it, but it's just looking at it here. This is a velocity graph. 
in other words, this is a graph of the rate of change of position, right? Graph of rate of change of position. The reason I want to write that down is because it's important to realize that if you have something that is a, a function or a graph for the rate of change of something, then the integral is going to give you... What does the integral give here? Well, in this, in this case, it gives you the position. So I'm going to write velocity in brackets here. And this is going to give you the position, but it gives you the net change in position. It doesn't give you the absolute position, right? It gives you the net change in whatever two values. You're, using, you're putting two values in when you do the definite integral. It gives you the net change between those values. All right, so if we, if we look at the area underneath here from 0 to 2, that's going to give us the net change in the position of this thing from 0 to 2. All this is is its speed. You don't actually know where the thing is, right? This particle moving. <laughs> Calculus textbooks, they like to do that because then it can move in any way you want. It can move up, suddenly turn around and go back or whatever. I guess that's still moving forward. It's velocity. But it can suddenly make changes like that that aren't physically possible. If you have the rate of change of something, a function or a graph, then the integral gives the net change in that. Okay, so again here. If you have rate of change of something, it gives the net change in that quantity. That's exciting. If you had a, uh, if you had a function for, um, if you had a, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this, but if you had a function for a rate of change of number of squirrels going by out there, right? I haven't seen one yet either, too. Um, rate, rate of change of whatever, right? Rate of change of anything, the rate that the squirrels are going by there. If we did the integral, the area under that graph, it would give us the number of squirrels and net change and how many squirrels have gone by over time, right? The problem is we can't get a nice smooth curve because they one comes by and then there's nothing. And um, six go by and a pack. Well, no, I mean the. So yeah, this is four times times three. So this is twelve. I know it doesn't look like it's to scale very well, right? But well, because. Well, because negative this is 2, but this is 7. I don't think that matches up. Negative 12, thank you. And then what's this one up above here? This is 3. This is the same. It's 3 again, isn't it? No, it's not. It's 4.5. 4.5. Uh, I'm just using the area of a triangle, area of a trapezoid. We're using sophisticated calculus. No, we're using... You're stuck with a trapezoid? The area of a trapezoid, it's just the average of the two heights, right? Because if you if you made these the same, right? Like if you if you took this piece off and put it over here, it'd be four and four, right? Instead of five and three. So you you do the average of the two the two parallel sides times the width of the thing. Anyways, if you want the if you want the net distance traveled during this entire trip, for the first part here, remember the velocity is positive. So it's going forward, so it's making forward progress, right? So it it goes a total of three meters forward, or whatever units those are. I don't know if I put units up above. And then it uh, starts going backwards. And in total here, the net change here is negative 12. So the net change in its distance there is negative 12. And then for the last part here, this area up here, it's going forward again, so that's plus 4.5, so that the net change in the distance, right, the net distance traveled, like it's gone, um, I don't know if I said draw a diagram here or anything, but it's it's gone forward 3, it's gone backwards 12, and then it's gone another 4.5 forward. So where does it end up? It ends up, yeah, negative 4.5. It ends up 4.5 meters behind where it started. So I guess that goes here. Go find where the particle did I... If you want to do this, though, um, 4.5 meters behind where it started. But if you want to know actually its its position, right, like up here, if you want to know the actual 
function for its position, you need to know this value, you need to know that constant, right? Or you need to know something about the function so that you can do it, right? It says uh, the particle starts at this. So you need some kind of initial condition there to use for that. This you use for this, right? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, thank you. X equals two when t equals zero. So if it's at two, then it's two minus four point five, negative two point five, right? We're cutting it close here. Total distance traveled, you can do that. If it goes three one way, 